Uh, good afternoon to everybody uh, and, and congratulations to those of you that have made it to this final session of the Winter School. Uh, I, I can see that you're, you're still enthusiastic. Um, so now we have, I know we met you on Monday, uh, some of you, and we had a discussion about uh, uh, how we're going to handle this session. So we've, we've divided you up into, into a number of groups and we've posed uh, several questions to you. And we, I have an esteemed panel with me that is going to help uh, judge uh, the, the, the quality of the presentations and arguments that are presented here. Um, and, and I just wanted to first mention their names. Uh, the, we have in our panel uh, Renette Engela, who heads the GTAC um, uh, uh, expenditure uh, evaluation section. I know that's not the right uh, uh, description, but she, she, she does the, the performance evaluation uh, studies within National Treasury, within D GTAC. We have Andrew Donaldson, who you saw on the panel earlier, uh, who is a former DDG of, of Budget Office and former leader of uh, GTAC. We have uh, Boitumelo Mashilo, who you saw on the, the panel with me just now, who heads the, the, the project appraisal, appraisal unit within uh, uh, GTAC, and Tokozile Masango. Who is the who is from the Department of Performance Management, Performance Monitoring and Evaluation? So we're going to be checking your presentations, uh, and of course there there are three questions that we posed: Should government introduce a, a basic income grant? Uh, should vaccines be made compulsory for all South Africans over the age of eighteen? And the lockdown regulations necessary response or government overreach and of course over the last few days these have really been the topics of discussion in the various panels and presentations so we hope that you have learned and listened and, and we see the results to some extent in your presentation just so you're aware there are two uh, ways in which we're going to evaluate you after each uh, yes and no presentation uh, so a presentation of the team that is arguing yes and a presentation of the team that is arguing no to the question. We will then ask the audience to, to vote and the voting will take the form of emojis. In other words, if you, if you uh, support the, 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 the yes, you should put thumbs up. If you support the no, you should put thumbs down, I suppose. Uh, we can do it like that and we see how it goes. But that voting, that democratic voting uh, uh, will just be for your uh, ego and, and uh, sense of self. But uh, the, the prize will be determined by the voting of the panel, not the voting of the people. Uh, and the panel will use this uh, criteria to assess the, the uh, presentations. Firstly, the slides and presentation, was there a logical structure to the arguments? Uh, was the argument based in evidence? Did, uh, were statistics used in an impactful way? Uh, was the argument technically sound? Uh, and uh, were they, were they, is there creativity? Uh, and of course, these are, these, there may even be contradictions and balances and trade-offs that you have to reach between these, these things, but uh, that, that, that will be one set of criteria. Then we'll say, um, Questions and response. So, so after each presentation, the yes and the no, we will we will allow for a few questions. Was there insight into the question? Is there a logical response using evidence? And lastly, time management. Uh, um, uh, if you go over time, you will have points deducted. And if you have too many slides, you will have points deducted. I see somebody saying there, uh, Quena, that. Uh, there's no thumbs down uh, in the, uh, and, and Piha uh, Morudu agrees, there's no thumbs up down. We will, we, we will uh, brief you again. Uh, I think let's go straight into the presentations and then we will, we will refine our emoji voting uh, while, while the presenters are on. So I think the first team, uh, I'm going to call Team Maxwell. So the first question is around the basic income grant. And we have Team Maxwell in favor and Team Liam 
against. Uh, and I, I would uh, ask Team Maxwell to start. And of course, when you start, uh, the, one of the important tasks is to introduce your team and say who was part of the team that went into this presentation. So over to you, Team Maxwell. Uh, I see people called Chioma and Sikolile. Uh, I don't see any Maxwell uh, coming up, but uh, I assume that you are uh, the Team Maxwell. Um, I think we may be having con some connectivity issues with the first team. Uh, uh, Mr. Ankuna, Dis Ankuna, uh, you may go ahead. All right, before I do that, I just want to make sure that I've got all my colleagues on board. I'll just get a go. So we seem to be having a, a technical challenge. Uh, don't know if the technical people can help us. Uh, waiting for host to accept request. And that's what I see on my screen. But uh, I see Cheryl Lin, uh, Bantu Kazi, and Sikolile. Uh, I think Sikolile seems to be having uh, uh, connectivity issues, but any one of you are, are welcome to take us forward into the presentation if, if, if you're able. Hi, Prof. There are six of us presenting, and so I think a few are still waiting to be let in. Oh, some are waiting to be let in. I also see some uh, with the, the sharing of the presentation uh, needs to be activated. So uh, I don't know, technical team, if you can help us. Is the, pre is the presentation it's visible on stage? We can see the presentation. It will be good if you can put it on uh, presentation view. Uh, oh, okay. If you know, if you get my drift. There, perfect. Okay, guys, have we got everybody on board now? Yeah. I think let's proceed. Let's proceed. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Disa, and our group will be presenting an argument in favor of the Universal Basic Income Grant. The first aspect of our presentation, which will be presented by myself and Kaiya, will locate the Universal Basic Income Grant in the context of the failures of 1994 and the rising levels of poverty and inequality that we have since witnessed. Um, after us, will be followed by Cheryl, who will proceed and explain how the UBIC can significantly benefit the labor market. Uh, Dogozo will then illustrate how UBIC is predicated by the South African constitution. From there, Matthew will show that UBIC is financially feasible. After that, Chiyoma will illustrate the need for public-private partnership. And finally, Dogozo will conclude. So let us begin. The 1994 democratic transition failed to prioritize an aggressive economic development model. 1994's economic policies placed too much focus on addressing the balance of payments difficulties that were created by the previous apartheid regime. The economic policies adopted in 1994 opted for a redistribution through growth model, which has not worked out. This is evidenced through rising poverty and inequality. What we argue is that the universal basic income grant in embarking through a growth through redistribution model instead stands to increase labor productivity as well as increase entrepreneurship in the township and rural economy. Inequality influences South Africans on a political, social, and economic front. The top 10% earners in South Africa own 86% of the total wealth in the country, and the top 1% owns 55%. The top 0,01%, which equates to 3,560 individuals, owns 15% of the household wealth, which is greater than the wealth owned by 90% of the population at the bottom, which equates to 32 million individuals. 
A study by SAME conducts a policy simulation exercise to analyze the revenue generated from progressive tax that can be used to finance the UBIC and to what extent it reduces income inequality. The study suggests that the UBIC can reduce income inequality by 30% when the policies are accompanied and financed through progressive taxation. The UBIC is necessary as it is inclusive in its criteria, which means it effectively addresses poverty and inequality. The Studies in Poverty and Inequality Institute has proposed that the UBIC be 1,268 grand per month to assist over 13 million people living under the poverty line. The UBIC would improve the effectiveness of the existing social grants. Child support grants support 13 million children, but the grant is not enough for families. Post-1994, South Africa has not experienced a decline in child malnutrition, and the UBIC could assist in curbing prevalent food insecurity. The South African Constitution provides that everyone has the right to have access to social security, including appropriate social assistance for those who are unable to support themselves and their dependents. The state has a further obligation to take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve the progress realization of this right, the progressive realization of this right. We must have a rising floor of social and economic rights. Social security covers a wide variety of measures that provide cash or in-kind benefits or both. The provision of these measures takes place first in the event of an individual's earning power permanently ceasing, being interrupted, never developing, or being exercised only at an unacceptable cost, and such person being un unable to avoid poverty. Secondly, in order to maintain children. The white paper defines social security as policies which ensure that all people have adequate economic and social protection during unemployment, ill health, maternity and child rearing, widowhood, disability and old age by means of schemes for providing for their basic needs. The government's commitment to the constitution cannot be separated from the fiscal allocations that make our priorities as a nation possible. The proverbial, put your money where your mouth is. Our democracy has delivered more social support to more people than ever, shifting budget allocations away from defense in favor of healthcare, education, and grants. We now face the budget of the century, invited again to make mandated changes that reshape our society. The objectives of the fiscal state are to keep in tension both the goals of efficiency that lead to growth and the aims of equity that address the distribution of wealth and resources. We don't have to choose jobs or grants, growth or equity. We are capable of applying our best resources to achieving both and. In the most unequal country in the world, the introduction of a UBIG is one of the best tools available to reduce hunger and deprivation and fulfills our constitutional mandate to provide social security to all. Uh, Tokozo? Is that the end? Uh, yeah, I thought there was another person coming in Tokozo. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Uh, sorry about that. Advocating for the basic income grant is not a trade off on creating employment and does not encourage the government and the private sector to put in less effort in fixing the unemployment crisis. COVID-19 caused millions of job losses, leaving many citizens struggling to make ends meet. The recent unrest in KZN and Gauteng resulted in an estimate of 105,000 job losses, which means many have since been struggling to afford their basic needs, which is a violation of their human rights to dignity. Furthermore, the country has yet to make a full recovery in the labor market from the spillover effects of the 2008 global financial crisis. The implementation of a UBIG would allow us to tell a different story. If you are saying no to the implementation of UBIG, how should unemployed graduates who have the burden of taking care of their families provide for their basic needs? Thank you. Now, onto the big question of financing a UBIG. Firstly, it is possible to finance it through budget neutral taxation. Research by the Institute for Economic Justice suggests that we can finance a big by focusing on progressive taxation with a special focus on high income earners while avoiding placing increased strain on the middle class. This is as true in 2021 as it was almost two decades ago when the Black Sash published a report with similar findings. 
borrowing could also be considered. While public debt sustainability is a genuine concern, the graph on the right suggests we, are in a worse, we were in a worse off position in the mid-90s when debt servicing costs were almost double than they are today, suggesting we might have some room to maneuver. It has also been suggested by financial industry associations that we should be focusing on South Africa's risk premium as opposed to our stock of public debt by resolving policy uncertainties, increasing investment spending, and addressing balance sheet weaknesses of state-owned enterprises. We therefore argue that spending on a UBIC should not be seen, should not only be seen as the moral thing to do, but also as a mechanism to reduce our risk premium and in turn, an investment in our macroeconomic stability. In summary, we can afford it. There are feasible financing options. What we need is the political will. Government exploring partnership in UBIG. If a thing the pandemic proved potent is a statement all hands on deck, we need to look at basic income grant as an avenue to expand our society and achieve a partnership for service delivery to be integrated, an optimal way of providing alternative and creative ways of delivering a high quality of service in all society while still maintaining financially viable systems should be explored. Like my colleague mentioned, we can afford it by using strategies. Privatization arrangements can be used as such. In this regard, I'm saying a public-private partnership, a public-public partnership, and a public-community partnership. To quote Thomas Friedman, Great Disruption, written in 2009 in the New York Times, he said, let's today step out of the normal boundaries of analysis of our economic crisis and ask a radical question. What if the crisis of 2008 represents something much more fundamental than a deep recession? What if it's telling us that the whole great model we created over the last 50 years is simply unsustainable economically and ecologically? And that 2008 was when we hit the wall when modern nature and the market both said no more. Dare I reiterate the statement 12 years exactly where the whole where uh, 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 12 years where we actually had a system where the whole uh, nation experienced a cataclysmic shutdown, I mean, globally. So, if we are to see sustainability as using resources to meet the needs of today without compromising the needs of the future generation, then we need to look at redistribution of wealth, which includes job creation and financing as a means of sustainability using partners to achieve the universal basic income grant. So I propose that proactive measures using available evidences and lived experiences from other nations should be studied and implemented as opposed to reactive measures. UBIG is no longer just an idea for debate, but its implementation has become an imperative in order to effectively address social issues in this country, such as poverty, hunger, inequality and unemployment, which have been exacerbated by the pandemic. Periods of economic downturn necessitate the implementation of bold and robust policies to ensure true economic recovery. My teammates and I have demonstrated that with fiscal prudence, political will and efficient administration, UBIG can indeed be successfully implemented. Furthermore, the decision not to implement UBIG runs the risk of further increasing social upheaval in a country that is already one of the most unequal societies in the world. Evidence from the effects of the 2008 global financial crisis and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic illustrate that we need to make our economy more resilient to future economic shocks. Therefore, a collaboration with both the public and private sector may bring about the most effective solutions in the implementation of UBIG and assist in bringing the economy onto a faster recovery and growth trajectory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that the, 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 is that the end yes. of Team Maxwell? Yes. I suppose That's Maxwell good. is the person who's been assisting you uh, from the GTAC team, right? Uh, yeah, where is great. Maxwell? Can we see Maxwell quick, quickly or we can't see him? But anyway, uh, uh, thank you all very much. Sorry for those who had technical challenges, but let's go straight on to the next uh, presentation. The people who have the difficult task of maybe swimming against uh, uh, the, 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 um, the stream of, or, or, or the, the way the wind is blowing. Uh, but let's see how it goes. Uh, so Team Liam need to come on next. Uh, while they are, and thank you all very much to Team Maxwell. It's great. I even uh, saw uh, for the first time 
some of my students from WITS who attend my, my, my WITS classes because when they, uh, when they attend the classes, it's almost impossible to get them to switch on their cameras. So I want to congratulate GTAC uh, for at least uh, getting the cameras on. I see Liam, you're, you're in the house. Uh, is your team with you? I think they're starting to join now. Um, so I'll leave it up to them. They're the okay, ones that did all the Kyla hard work. Is on. Let's give them a moment or two to come in. I've, I've, I've worked out a solution to the, to the emoji problem. And that is that all I'm, because I see here that I actually have powers to, to create a poll and publish it for you. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, once the next team is, is, uh, has finished, I will, I will put up the poll on the screen and you will be able to vote uh, uh, yes or no. And uh, so, yeah, let me hand over to, to team uh, Liam, uh, who, who's, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure who's uh, sharing their screen and who's leading the presentation, but uh, you can start now if you're able. Hello, uh, my name is Paul, uh, Paul Reitz, and uh, I'll be sharing our debate. Mm. Uh, let me just uh, speak out the sheer, sc sheer screen quickly. Okay. Can, uh, can you see? Uh, can you see my screen? We see the presentation is up. I think Veronica is sharing it. All right. Um, so we were under the instruction that only one should present. So uh, I'm the only group member that will be presenting our debate. And yeah, I'm ready to start whenever. Please go ahead. And we'll rely on Veronica to share. Good afternoon, esteemed guests, panelists, and fellow debaters. Let me start off with a quote. Uh, let, let me start off with a quote. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. We as opposition believe that the government should not implement a basic income grant. We believe in South Africa and its potential, and the potential of its people. We, understand, we stand today with the possibility to put South Africa on the trajectory towards prosperity and greater equity. We as op opposition will lay our case why a basic income grant uh, will not meet its intended objectives in the long run. And we will also lay forth the potential negative side effects that such a program may have. We will also support our arguments by laying forth a better proposed program that will pick up on the shortfalls of the basic income grant. We will approach this debate from a monetary economic point of view. This was compiled by me, Paul, and my group member, Buntu Kazi. We will also take it from an affordability, feasibility, and sustainability side of the debate, of the argument. This was compiled by Musa and Sazi Kele. And lastly, we'll look at the problem of the basic income grant from a poverty cycles, inequality, and structural unemployment and efficiency of grant outlook. This was compiled by Nkembo, Kaila, and Muchara. Let me start off the debate by taking the monetary economic side. Any globalized modern economy with floating exchange rates runs off of a, off the principles of production, productivity, sustainability, sales, growth, and trade. These principles are underlined by the flow of goods and service in the current economy. Just to go back to the groundworking of basic macroeconomics. The volume of flow of each of, of each of goods and services needs to be growing, or we have the or should have the potential to grow with the volume and the flow of currency in the economy. If a great if a, there is a greater volume of currency versus a great, greater volume of currency to goods, there will be an inflationary pressure on our currency. The excess flow of currency in our economy is offset by taxes as the government has a monopoly supply on the currency. So taxes reduce the amount of currency and hence potential consumption, savings and investment in the economy. I would refer you to an amazing paper of soft currency economics by Warren Mosley. In relation to the basic income grant, 
all we are doing is we're increasing the volume and flow of currency in the economy. So we're just increasing the ability of people to demand and consume. Well, not while not creating programs to aid the needed support to the su supply side of the economy. Current estimates put the level of unemployment, according to the classical definition in South Africa, at 7.42 uh, 242 million people. This has been, according to um, stats from Stats on, on the 1st of June 2021, this has been exacerbated by the pandemic, as we, as we all know. It is clear our economy can't sustain the jobs for its citizens at this point. Any program the government installs would have to address the supply side of the economy. As we do have a theore theoretical limitless supply of currency, uh, we are not arguing against it if it could be finance, but rather we have real constraints in our economy, real resources. And the interplay between real resources and the flow of currency is what causes these inflation risks. Right now, if we look at the COVID-19 People's Co Coalition, their estimates for a basic income grant, um, and the opposition was talking about a universal basic in income grant, that would put the estimate cost per year of an excess of 500 billion Rand per year if we are using uh, the poverty line prices of 1,280 Rand per month per person. To, we would have to improve our exports, production, and GDP significantly to offset, offset these costs, as taxation won't be a popular opinion, as we have already as we already have the most progressive tax system in the world, according to inequalityindex.org. And it would be and it would be reducing the private sec the private sector's ability to supply additional jobs, and it might lead to greater a, a potential greater uh, a level of capital flight uh, from because of these high tax proposed tax tax rates on uh, on on the upper side of the income distribution. Uh, yeah, so this is a prevalent issue that we have in South Africa. With a basic income grant, it's just a short term symptom and symptom of the deeper structural problems we have, and also the a, a introduction of the basic income grant would increase the monetary supply, the M1 monetary supply, without an equivalent increase in productivity. This program would have long-term negative effects and the costs aren't offset by greater uh, than inflation economic growth, as uh, the opposition hasn't proposed. Uh, so to take the um, taxation and productivity side of the debate, we can see that uh, in, the as in the absence of a in the absence of a basic income grant, the opportunity cost of being less or unproductive becomes higher. And we can see this evidence by the current stagnant labor participation rate, even though we have increased the percentage of the population receiving a form of government welfare, increased from, increasing from a 7% in 1996 to 31% in 2019, according to SASA. Basic income grants in the absence of, sustainable, uh, in the absence of economic growth are not sustainable and they may lead to increased borrowing and high interest rates in the long term. We can see we are in an unsustainable trajectory right now, as we have 18.2 plus million people receiving a form of social grant, we only have 14 million taxpayers. Now, to take the debate, debate on the affordability, feasibility, and sustainability uh, uh, perspective, can we go next slide? Thank you. Uh, as a country, we cannot afford to finance the basic income grant because of the following reasons. So, the South African government has a debt, a debt accounted to 77.1% of the country's nominal GDP in December 2020, compared to the ratio of 75.3% in the previous quarter. The required stable debt to, debt to optimal debt to, debt to GDP ratio is about 60%, because that would still lead South Africa to be attractive to investors. If we put more unsustainable pressure on the fiscus, this would lead to more, uh, more credit and investment downgrades and greater hurting the supply side of the economy. We also do not have the capacity to finance a basic interim, interim grant. If we look at the budget deficit of the past years, we should be using, we are currently in the paradigm of trying to get a budget surplus to service roughly the 
uh, to service our interest costs that we have now that account for about 11% of our national budget. We need to address our debt denoted in foreign currencies as this debt is debt we can default on. And this is the parag paradigm of our current economic framework put forward by the Treasury. So uh, another point is reductions from, uh, they also talked about reductions in, in spending and this could be reductions would have it, would, which would have opportunity cost, and which might spill over to reductions in education and public expenditures. So to touch on feasibility, just uh, quickly, there needs to be an assessment and diagnostics program that would be crucial as a grant as, is a big commitment and the nation would need to evaluate this in, in line with a national development strategy. And to touch on sustainability quickly, with the current rate of it, with the current rate of our economy with regards to high levels of unemployment inequality, as listed before, we cannot we cannot sustain such basic income grants uh, from, from taxpayers. For a grant program, for a grant program, the South African government would need to adopt a feasible physical transparency and accountability reform strategy with full disclosure of the objectives of the grant. Also, other sustainable measures could be put in place instead of grants that the government can look at sustainable financing incentives that could focus on long-term impacts and outcomes for the population, developing innovation and digital financing programs or platforms. The idea being to equip people with skills to sustain themselves and contribute to the economy. Now, we look at the problem of a basic income grant from a poverty cycles, inequality, structural unemployment, and efficiency outlooks. So, have basic, grant, have basic grants worked in the past in South Africa? According to the Future of Work Research Project, a document put together by the Wits Law School and Institute of Social Justice in December 2020, they put forward arguments of, arguments of basic income grants not being as effective as we assume them to be. Here are a few points raised. There needs to be firstly a standard of living established before we can determine the needs in the in the form of a basic income grant according to the, this is according to the un committee of economic social and cultural rights and that should be clearly stated by uh, the opposition the government there needs to be better focus on the functionality of free primary health care no fee paying schools technological developments in the education system and free basic services such as water electricity and the funds from a basic from basic income grant to households, which will be used on such expenditures. There has also been further increase in the dependency of social grants due to its availability. There should be rather be a notion of employment or betterment of education systems or enable independence through job creation. Given the embedded nature of corruption in, in the South African landscape, civil society and organizations have warned that the legal uncertainty caused by additional regulations Regard, relating to the COVID-19 emergency procurement compounds the risk of corrupt, corruption due to the lack of transparency. There is no guarantee that the allocated funds will reach those in need. There is there That is why an in-kind transfer would be more beneficial versus a basic income grant cash transfer. This caused doubt on the basic income grant's ability to address poverty cycles, inequality, and structural unemployment. Talk of the basic income grant as a policy option was triggered by the Taylor Report in 2002. So this idea has been around for a long time. And the basic income grant is assumed to be a solution to widen coverage for all and support households' abilities to afford basic needs, food, uh, and open op opportunities for investment spending. But at the current proposed rates, that would not be possible. Will it reduce assist in reducing poverty? Research done through... through Research done during the pandemic has shown that the government's special COVID-19 grant, a temporary cash transfer program, succeeded in assisting millions of people who would have otherwise not qualified for the grant. But most recipients of these grants have fallen into the middle income uh, of, of distribution as a result of the pandemic, according to Caller 2020. However, this COVID-19 grant is to be taken as an experiment experiment as a rollout for the basic income grant. To see any of the sufficient poverty reduction, the government would need to increase the size as a simulation done by, also by Collar in 2020, suggests that 1,200 rand basic income grant would be sufficient, but would come at the cost that is 50% more expensive 
than simply utilizing the existing grants we have. So it is inherently infeasible. So the direct poverty reducing effects of the grant is not as large as we have heard. And the, it's not especially different from existing tools we have in our social policy package. Therefore, the proposed basic income grant does nothing to address the underlying drivers of poverty cycles in South Africa. A basic income grant, while able to assist with household basic needs does not endow participants with significant significant economic economic powers lifting people to or or just above the poverty line does not do very much to address the fact that labor market conditions are behind the high levels of uh, and poverty and inequality uh, also from uh, from Willard's work showing the power of our existing social assistance programs and limits the uh, of what we can still get out of the grant system. It is necessary to move the conversation from more grants to more intervention in the labor market and growth policy in reviving industries, as we cover from the COVID-19 hits to the, to the economy. Now, will it assist in reducing inequality? Another talk, a big talk point of the base, basic income grant is that it will reduce inequality and build solidar solidarity amongst its citizens. If exploring in exploring the dynamics of inequality in South Africa, dis, the disparities in the labor market income are the biggest driver of aggregate, aggregate inequality in, South, in the South African economy, while excluding redistributive taxes and transfers. The South African Gini coefficient falls at 0.77%, while if we include all the taxes and transfers, we fall, we fall down to 0.59 Gini coefficient. This is shown to be this has shown the considerable power of our existing progressive fiscal tools. A basic income grant would not do much better than, than that would involve a greater stress on the physicists. Other welfare programs haven't changed the metric of the Gini coefficient. As we can see here, if we look at the, if we look at the graph of the Gini coefficient, I think that's the previous slide, it, you can see it's quite, quite stable. Yeah, yeah, the bottom image thing. Um, and we also, South Africa has long been battling low economic growth as of recent as, and has seen a relative decline in GDP per capita as of 2010 to present, we can, as you can see there on the graph there. Also, high unemployment, stagnant income growth, and the majority of the, for, for majority of the population. An unconditional cash transfer for, of the proposed amount would not enable a social, a skilled workers to afford the necessary retraining, nor does it it trigger any significant change in the growth performance of key industries such as agriculture, mining, and manufacturing. Will the basic income grant assist in reducing unemployment? Inconclusive evidence on labor market effects, but a transfer of the proposed size is unlikely to trigger strong enough demand shocks to trigger structural and, tr and transform and create job creation. The introduction of a basic income grant might lead to dependency syndrome, which might make beneficiaries of the program reluctant to get employment. So, as opposition, we would might like to make a proposal of a job guarantee program, which will pick up on the shortfalls of the basic income grant. To give you context, this program is put out in India under the N NREGA, where a guaranteed wage, if we take South Africa's as a context of 250 rand per person per day for 100 days is paid to let's say 50 million 15 million households uh, programs and this would um, work programs like infrastructure and projects organized through lo local government would successfully decrease poverty as those would be the employment creating programs that we installed and uh I see there's some walking emojis. <laughs> um, how it works. Uh, any working age adult who registers is guaranteed 100 days of work, paid a minimum wage, which is of work is not provided wage paid any anyway. Any an estimated 10 people, 10, 10 million people would receive it. This program is flexible and would be would be adjusted to South Africa's needs. So the current proposal is that uh, introduction of production subsidies designed to poor unemployed workers will be as as aggressive will be as aggressive expansion to the public works programs and would cost uh, would cost the 160 billion per year and reduce uh, food poverty rate to four percent but this growth this expenditure would induce a return on investment through 
greater economic growth. So, in conclusion, uh, South Africa has complex problems and it takes complex solutions. And a big blanket solution of a basic income problem would not support, would not do South Africa and its citizens any good in the long term. We have pre prevailing issues that need to be addressed at more fundamental levels. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, for that, uh, Paul. And why don't we just quickly take a little bit of time to see Bantukazi, Kaila, Muchada, Sizakele, and Msa. Can you just quickly put your cameras on so that we see you uh, before we, we, we wave goodbye to you? Uh, thank you very much. So that we know that you do indeed exist. Uh, you see, students, I don't know why students don't want to put their cameras on. They usually say it's because of connectivity, but I think it's just an excuse. But anyway, thank you very much uh, to Team Liam. Uh, the idea here is that we would uh, have some discussion, but I think time is moving. There's been a vibrant discussion in the Q&A and in, on the chat. And uh, all I will do before we move on to the next one is to uh, put up uh, this uh, uh, show on stage, put up this uh, uh, poll and ask you, uh, having listened to the arguments for and against, uh, do you think South Africa should introduce a basic income grant? I see there are 91 people who claim to be in the room. Some of them may just be uh, um, switching on their, 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 their uh, uh, laptops and, and logging in and then going and doing playing football somewhere. We don't know. Uh, but uh, seems like uh, yes is in the lead. Yes is achieving 67 votes, uh, 30, 27 votes for yes, only 13 for no. If you want to vote for no, you better get in the stage immediately. Yeah, there's not much time left. I'm going to close the poll in about five seconds. So you better get your vote in uh, before the time. Yes is in the lead. Yes is in the lead. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. I think we have an overwhelming majority uh, in favor of yes. Uh, and I will now close the poll and we go on to the next debate. So, and I think I need technical advice now. Uh, do I do I leave this session and go to a next session, or do I stay in this session? I think is the thing that is challenging me. Michael, we're going to end this session. I don't see how I get into another session. To move to the next one, okay? Just so that the name and everything is correct. Okay, I don't know. I don't need to do anything then. <laughs>